ago in the distant, dreamy kingdom of Gloaming, there was a village called Satya Soleil. And in that village was a street, a street unlike any other. On the surface, you could never tell this tiny thoroughfare was any different from the streets in your town. But if you happen to be passing by the fateful trail at precisely 8.38 on a Monday morning, then you would have found that the curious little street called Five Rose Lane was actually never ending and ever changing. You could walk this way to the edge and that way to the edge, but one more step in either direction would have caused the street to grow itself by precisely one city block for as many times as you dared to step beyond the edge. You see, you could really only get to Five Rose Lane by way of the Friend Street Alley, because there was no access from the main road that connected Satya Soleil to the outside world. If you were lucky enough to stumble upon it, you likely would have thought Five Rose Lane was its own village apart from Satya Soleil. And if you were lucky enough to stumble upon it at precisely 8.38 on a Monday morning, then truly, you were meant to find it. It had everything you could ever want or need in a place. And the people who lived there were so kind and loving and helpful. Turning on to Five Rose Lane meant that your life would never be the same. You could travel the street forever and ever and never run out of new things to do or see or experience. It's not that you couldn't leave. It's just that you wouldn't want to once you began strolling its beautiful tree-lined avenues. It was the kind of hamlet where friendly neighbors came together to share their wisdom and to work on special projects that made their piece of the world a happier place to live. And someone was always planning a party because there was always something nice to celebrate on that sweet little street called Five Rose Lane. How does she know, you might be asking? Well, I'll tell you. My grandmother lived there and her grandmother before that and her grandmother before that, as far back as anyone can remember. The spirit of Five Rose Lane is alive in my memory because my grandmother told me all about it when I was a little girl. Those stories are still some of my favorite stories, and today I'd like to share a few of them with you. The last time we were together, we planned a grand festival called the Wildwood Waltz. Do you remember all the special things we did to celebrate the strawberry moon in the month of June? But just because the month of June was over didn't mean the people of Five Rose Lane stopped having fun. To them, July was just as special, and August after that, and September after that, and on and on, until they found themselves right back in the middle of June. There's an old rhyme I love to say. When lions dance across the sky, when the sun is shining bright and high, when cicadas sing their familiar song, to Sunbeam Mountain goes the throng. Have you ever been camping? If not, summer is the perfect time to go. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this series. Going camping on Sunbeam Mountain was one of my grandmother's fondest memories. And I can't wait to show you some of the activities she and her friends enjoyed on their trek into the Grand Wilderness. Are you ready to do some merrymaking as we hike to our campsite? Well, let's go. I hope you're excited for our camping trip. I suppose I should introduce myself. My name is Miss Lane, L-A-N-E. Me llamo Lana. The last time we were together for the Wildwood Waltz, we pretended to stand in a big round circle un circulo gigante. But today, I'd like to try a new formation. Let's imagine that we're standing in a vertical line, one person in front of the other. We'll have a line leader at the front and a caboose at the back. Maybe you've made these kinds of lines at school to walk from place to place. Teachers sure do love nice, neat, single file lines. Why? 
because it makes it easier to count their students, of course. It also makes it easier to stay on the trail while we're hiking. It's important to stay on the trail. You wouldn't want to get lost in the woods. But if you ever do, just sit down right where you are and start calling for help. If you keep walking around, it makes it hard for the people searching for you to figure out where your voice is coming from. Enough of that kind of talk. Let's sing some traveling songs to pass the time. Marching, marching, here we go. Marching, marching to and fro. I'm in front and you're in back. Let's switch now, but stay on track. Marching, marching, one, two, three. Marching, marching, you and me. You go left and I'll go right. Meet in the middle before it's night. There's a bright golden haze in the meadow. There's a bright golden haze in the meadow. The corn is so high as an elephant's eye. And it looks like it's climbing clear up to the sky. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I've got a beautiful feeling. Everything's going my way. I love to go a wandering along the mountain track. And as I go, I love to sing my knapsack on my back. And as I wander by the stream, the dance is in the sun. So joyously it calls to me, come join my happy song. Valderi, Valdera, Valderi, Valdera, Valderi, Valdera, my knapsack on my back. I tip my hat to all I meet. And they wave back to me. The blackbirds call so loud and sweet from every green wood tree. High overhead, the skylarks swing. They never rest at home. And just like me, they love to sing as o'er the world they roam. Valdery. Marching two by two, hurrah, hurrah! The ants go marching two by two. The little one stops to tie her shoe, and they all go marching down to the ground to get out of the rain. Boom, 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 boom! The ants go marching four by four, hurrah, hurrah! The ants go marching four by four, hurrah, hurrah! The ants go marching four by four. The little one stops and says no more. They all go marching down to the ground to get out of the rain. Boom, 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 boom. Make new friends, but keep the old. One is silver and the other's gold. A circle is round, it never ends. That's how long I want 
to be your friend. A fire burns bright, it warms the heart. We've been friends from the very start. You help me, and I'll help you. Let's work together to see it through. The sky is blue, the earth is green. We can help to keep it clean. Across the land, across the sea. Friends forever we will always be. If today is Purple Day, or Monday, as the grown-ups call it, then tomorrow is Red Day, and yesterday was White Day. To Sunbeam Mountain we go in July, cause that's when lions dance in the sky. The season is summer, and we've a ways to go before autumn burst with her colors on show. I see a rainbow o'er the land. See its colors, see its span. It is so red, gold, green and blue. I want to climb it now with you. I think we found the perfect place for our campsite. The ground is nice and flat. There's a stream running nearby and there's not too many trees overhead to fall in on our roof. One thing's for sure, if we're going to be living in the woods for a few days, then it's important to find just the right spot. If you're camping in the mountains, the higher up you go, the less bugs you'll encounter. I don't know about you, but I don't want to spend the night with a mosquito. Now don't get me wrong, I love bugs. I do. They are all so helpful to keep our dear old earth in tip-top shape. Some of them, like ants and earthworms, loosen the soil so more plants can grow. Others, like flies and roaches, eat dead and rotting things so the air we breathe stays clean and fresh. But my favorite bugs are the ones who work with plants to make sure they keep growing for years to come. Those are called pollinators, and lots of insects fall into that category. Think about bees and butterflies, and yes, even mosquitoes. Some animals are considered pollinators too. Everything you see on our planet has a special purpose, which is why we have to take really good care of all creatures, great and small, as well as trees, flowers, rivers, and dirt, too. It's true that some creatures are a little yucky, but it's important that we look out for them with the same kind of love we give our favorite living things. Most animals and insects won't hurt you if you give them lots of space. They generally only attack if they feel threatened or if you get too close to their nest. Have you ever seen your mom get really angry when someone tries to pick on you? Well, creatures feel the same way about their babies and they will do anything in their power to protect them from harm. Did I ever tell you the story about how the people of Five Rose Lane saved the dragonflies? No? Well, it's a pretty special story. Once upon a time, in the village of Satya Soleil, there was an awful drought. For three whole summers, it didn't rain, not one drop. Well, the rivers got low, and the creeks stopped running, the ponds dried up and the crops wouldn't grow, and on and on this went. The dry weather affected everyone and everything. People had to go to other towns to find food. Animals left the wildwood in search of water. And even the teeniest, tiniest insects had a hard time surviving these tough conditions. Honey Loon Pond was known for its bug ballets. At dusk, people would stake out their spot on the shoreline to watch the fireflies flicker in the reeds, the dragonflies dash across the sky, and the striders skate over the surface of the water. Honey Loon Pond was teeming with life, 
but by the end of the third summer with no rain, it had shrunk to just a small, shallow puddle of mud. The people of Five Rose Lane knew they had to do something if they ever hoped to see another bug ballet. At the time, there were two twins, a boy and a girl, who lived high up in the hills of Sunbeam Mountain. Their names were Robbie and Celine, and they were well known for being the stewards of a thriving bug farm. Any kind of bug you needed for your garden, they had it, and they would gladly give it to you for free if you promised to be kind to all creatures. Ravi and Celine were called upon to find a solution to the ever-shrinking Honeyloon Pond. And do you know what? Within two summers, those dragonflies and water striders were back in business, thanks to Ravi and Celine's invention. And maybe a winter full of snow, too. To make Ravi and Celine's dragonfly drip, you'll need a blue or violet shallow dish, these are the colors that pollinators like best. A flower pot to make a sturdy base. Rocks and moss. A salt wheel to provide the minerals that bugs need to survive. You can usually find these at pet stores in the rabbit section. And fresh water. Step one, place the saucer on top of the flower pot. Step two, put the salt wheel into the saucer. Step three, build a ladder with the rocks and moss. Insects need a safe place to land so they can drink water without the risk of drowning. Step four, add fresh water, but be careful not to cover the rocks. Check the water levels every few days and add more as needed. Ravi and Celine taught everyone on Five Rose Lane how to make the dragonfly drip. Although water was scarce, the Sotfusolayans knew how important it was to share what they could with the creatures of the wildwood. Slowly but surely, the insects and animals found their way back to the village, and the delightful bug ballets over Honeyloon Pond could resume. What's your favorite way to help the little beastie friends living around your yard? I hope you'll tell me all about it on the Five Rose Lane Forum. Just find the link in the description box below. And don't forget to send me pictures of your dragonfly drip. Whenever you're ready, you can find me right back here at our campsite. And we'll do some sun printing. I hope you've had a chance to grab a delicious snack. As I said earlier, today is Purple Day. Hoy es el Día Morado. Or Monday, el lunes. On Purple Day, I kind of like to take it easy. But I do enjoy making things like paintings, poetry, music, and photography. But today, it's so hot outside that I think I'm just going to let the sun do all the work while I catch a little cat nap underneath the shade of my favorite tree. Did you know that the sun can take pictures? The sun produces what we call ultraviolet rays. And those rays are so strong that they can change the colors of things we leave laying around outside. Just think about what happens to your skin when you forget to wear sunscreen at the beach. It either turns red or brown depending on how fair or tan your skin might be. Have you ever left a toy outside? What happened to it? It probably faded or changed colors altogether if it had some sort of liquid inside of it. Back in the days when my grandmother lived on Five Rose Lane, they would use their time at Sunbeam Mountain to do a process called sun printing. They knew that the UV rays from the sun acted like a natural bleach, so they would bring fabrics, paper, and any other kind of surface they wanted to use in order to capture the sun's special printmaking powers. Sometimes people use a special kind of paint or dye to do this work, but you don't really have to unless you want to sun print on wood, glass, or metal. If you find that you like making sun prints, 
There are plenty of kits available at the craft store, and they're usually called cyanotypes. You can make two kinds of images with sun printing, positive or negative monoprints. A positive monoprint develops when the subject matter is the darkest part of the overall image. If I want to make a positive print of this leaf, I will simply place it on my paper, put rocks on top to weigh it down, and then let it sit for several hours in broad sunlight. At the end of the day, the area of the paper that was covered up by the leaf will be the strongest focal point on my page. To make a negative monoprint, I'm going to arrange the leaves around the edges of my paper to make an interesting shape with the space in the middle. Notice how the middle of my paper is empty. This is the part the sun's light will bleach out, and I'll be left with a negative space, or in terms of art, that's the unfilled space around and between the main image. To make a sunbeam mountain monoprint, you'll need dark colored construction paper. Black paper will give you the clearest image, but you can use other colors if you don't mind it being a little fuzzy. You'll also need objects to print, weights to hold down your objects, and a sunny day. Step one, lay your paper on a flat surface where it will receive direct sunlight for three to four hours. Step two, place your objects where you want them. Remember, the parts of the paper that are exposed to light will be bleached. The parts of the paper that are covered up will remain dark. Step three, weigh down your objects and the paper. You can use rocks, old picture frames, or even sheets of glass. Step four, set it and forget it. The longer you let your paper sit in the sun, the sharper your image will be. If you're printing on fabric, you'll need to let it sit for a few days rather than just a few hours. This project is so easy, anyone can do it, and the results will be beautiful every time. These sun prints make nice cards and stationery. You can frame them to make a little collage, or if you print it on fabric, you can even make your own clothing and home decor. My grandmother made quilts with her sun printed fabric. I hope you'll show me what you made in the forum. I love to see your ideas come to life. Can you do me a favor? Tonight, before you go to bed, look up at the July sky and see if you can find any lions dancing around up there. You can let me know tomorrow on Red Day when we share some more campsite adventures. Goodbye to you all and sweet be your day. May angels surround you and watch you at play. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. Peace, love, and blessings to you, dear ones. May you always dream a new dream, carry a song in your heart, and spread your joy to others. I love you and I'll see you again very soon. Adios.